here with Candia Hainsworth Designs and I am in the official classroom for the Sew and Show workshops. Today we are doing something a bit different. So in the late spring, early summer of this year, I started a series called the Embroidery Report Card. And what would happen is I would purchase a design for an order and then grade the embroidery designer based on the following criteria. However, I've received some emails feeling of, you know, of the um, other embroidery designers and, and people who are hobbyists and in the business, they were saying that, you know, I was grading them a bit harshly, and some even thought that I favored the embroidery designers' designs that I really liked. But my thought was, it is what it is, and I do expect the embroidery designers to meet a certain criteria because the items that I am using the embroidery designs on, I am selling. And so, it needs to meet a certain criteria. So, if it's high for some, you know what, I'm a bit fussy. I feel like if someone's paying me money for something, it needs to be right. Okay, so today, we are doing something a bit different, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to be the judge. I'm not going to give too much input. I'm just going to do the embroidery design, and let's see how it comes out. I have an order, and I'm going to be purchased an embroidery design from Applique Corner. It is one of those 3D giraffe designs. These are the fabrics that I'm going to use to make that applique. Also, um, I recommend using water salvi. The batting is optional. You don't have to use that. That's purely my preference. You're going to need some kind of applique scissors because it's a lot of little cutting that you're going to have to do. And I would use some kind of basting spray or temporary spray to uh, ap apply those uh, fabrics to the applique. Let's get started. Okay, so I have um, already uh, purchased the design from uh, Applique Corner, and I'm just going to uh, open up the file here. And then I um, see I have purchased a, a couple of, um, of these designs. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, tap on giraffe ears because that's the, uh, the design that we're doing. And then um, I like to look and see how uh, embroidery designers um, organize the files for us. And for starters, I see that she did list a stitch order. So that's actually good because you want to kind of... Um, see like what's next usually when it's a stitch order it tells you okay it's going to do the face and then it's going to do the ears and then so forth okay uh, let's see if there's um any pdf instructions in here generally there are usually pdf uh, files just to uh, give you instructions on uh, how to make an applique because because the embroidery designer does not know if you are experienced and generally they will include uh, PDF files instructions uh, just in case they happen to be your first lucky choice uh, to try an applique but I don't see any here but it doesn't mean that it's not here it might be that I'm just missing it so I'm just gonna move forward select the um, the giraffe design that I want and then I'll come back Okay, so for this design, because you have a, uh, a, stitch, a stitch chart, which is going to tell you which step you're going to be, you can kind of plan ahead if you are using a multi-needle machine, which head will be the color for that particular step, okay? And if you are using a single head machine, no worries, you can just switch it accordingly, okay? So the first step is going to be your tack down stitch of the face. So if you direct your attention to this area here, it's going to tell me that the first process of this design is going to um, stitch an outline of the face okay so I'm just going to um, close this and then just get started And so I know that because this is a high piled fabric, which is a terry cloth, you could hardly see it. But if you look closely, you can see the indentation of where the fabric is going to be. So I'm going to add my batting and my fabric. Now, remember, the batting is purely optional. I like a, a smooth finish, but you don't need it. Um, I'm going to just add some adhesive spray to the batting and to the fabric, and then I'm going to place it over this entire area. Alright, so I'm just going to give it a little spritz 
and then I'm going to take my fabric and put it on top of that batting just make sure that it's nice and smooth then I'm going to turn it on the other side give it another little spritz and then I'm going to place it over the area the entire area where that um, outline and this is going to be tack down in the next step I'm just going to give it a you know a soft press just to make sure that it's adhering and then I'm going to tell the computer that we are ready for the next step tack down is tacking down the fabric for the face of the giraffe okay so it has tacked down the fabric if you can see the outline here I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it very closely to the tack down lines making sure that I do not cut the tack down lines then I'm going to move forward and already I can see that the next step is going to be the ears so I'm going to allow the embroidery machine to move on to the next step of making the outline I'll put the fabric and then I'll go and cut that out too Okay, so the next part of this design is going to be the nose or the uh, the snout. So that's the area that is going to tack down. If you direct your attention here, it's going to show you the little area that is going to tack down. So I'm just going to uh, direct my um, embroidery machine to do so. And so once again, it is just tacking down that outline of the area that I'm going to put the fabric. Okay, so I've already sprayed it. Now I'm just going to slide it over that area. And that area would be this area here. Just going to make sure that it's over the entire area. Just going to just um, mash it down a bit into the fabric. And then I'm just going to prompt the machine to tack the fabric down. But I'm also going to put on my reserve button. All right. And now it's going to tack that part of the fabric down. Next, I'm going to show you what it looks like to cut out the outline for uh, this design or this part of the design. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to take it off of the machine just so you can get a closer look at what I'm doing. So I guess this is kind of live, right? Almost. All right, so you see this little area here? I am going to cut very closely. Okay, so I'm going to cut off all this excess and having a good scissors is very important at this point. I want to cut as close as I possibly can to that tack down line without actually cutting the tack down line, okay? So I'm just going to take it and go all the way around and then once I do that, okay, see that I can actually go back and get it a little bit closer, but I'm going to do that all the way around and then I'm going to put it back onto the machine. Okay, so we have the entire face of the giraffe tacked down with the fabric. And now the next steps are going to move forward to uh, actually stitching it, the finishing stitches, okay? So that means that it's going to stitch it down permanently with that bold satin stitch that, you know, everyone loves. At least that's what I'm hoping for with this design. But so far, so good. Um, I gotta say that I was a little disappointed that I did go back into my computer and I did not see any PDF instructions. Uh, so if you are new to uh, embroidery applique, you might want to watch some other YouTube videos because even with my video, I didn't really do a close-up step by step process. So if you don't know how to uh, do appliques, once again, you just want to go look on other YouTube videos. All right, because the instructions were not in the file. All right, so what I'm recommending now is that you use Waddle Savi uh, stabilizer, and that's going to be this little thin film. And what's going to happen is you are going to need 
at least a piece to cover the entire face and the horns as well, okay? So I'm going to lightly spritz this, and because mine's is already pre-cut, I believe this is like an 8x8, eight eight. I'm going to have to use two, or it might even be 6x6, six six. I don't even know. All right, so I'm going to cover the first part of the face, and then... I have the horn sticking up, and we don't want to waste, right? So I'm just going to cut a, cut this in half, just so I have enough to cover the horns. And then I'm going to spritz it. And then I'm going to cover the horns. And then I'm going to place this back onto the machine, and then let it do its final embroidery stitching. So it's doing the final satin stitch on the ears and as I predicted it would be this bold beautiful satin stitch. Now it has moved on to uh, the final stitching of the face. Once again that bold beautiful embroidery. I love it. So, so far so good. And now it is embroidering the uh, the tack down for the mouth or the nose area. So I am very pleased thus far. And so the next step is going to be the nostrils. So I would definitely say if you are embroidering one of these uh, designs on a towel or even fleece, you definitely want to use water salvi. You definitely want to use some kind of topping. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, allowed the embroidery machine to uh, complete some of the, um, the steps that are ahead, which is the nostrils and the, um, the satin stitches for the eyes, and then the eyebrows, and also the areas for the, um, the air holes, okay? Now, what I see with this step, it is on the black part of the, um, the eyebrows. I am going to have to do this part over because I see that the terry cloth, even though I used water solving, is bleeding through. And I don't like too many white spots or specks showing. And that might be that the, uh, the fabric that I used were, it was entirely too thick. I didn't use any batting underneath the eyes, but I will have to do this part over. Just for my own preference, I don't like to see the white specks bleeding through. see if it's going to uh, cover those white specks the second time around. So far, so good. So you see, I am a bit fussy, but I want it to come out right. I'm okay with one or two specks, not ten. And so far, so good. And so now I am uh, moving on to the eyeball, and I'm doing the eyes green. And if you see on the, um, the brow, that double stitch does make a difference. It's that bold, black, no specks. I really like that. It's a nice, crisp look, a nice, finished look. So you can see that this design is really coming together. There are a couple of more steps, and then it has to do the personalization. Right now, it's working on the little hairs for the horns. But this was, uh, I would say, thus far, very well designed. I'm very pleased with the, uh, the overall design of it thus far. Of course, it's not finished yet, but I'm happy. It's 75% finished, so...
okay so we are done with this design the only thing i have to add now is the personalization which of course is not included in the design but overall the look of this design is phenomenal here are the uh, the ear holes the only thing I would have it in regards to gripes about this whole thing because it really was ma magnificently designed is the fact that I really didn't see anywhere where there were instructions for how to do an applique or the ears. So if you don't know how to make the ears, you're going to either have to, have to figure it out or stay tuned because you know I have a tutorial for that. But overall, the design came out very lovely. The only thing is, again, you would be stuck if you were a newbie, if you were a person that does not know how to uh, do appliques on a regular basis, this is your first time, you would be stuck because I didn't see anywhere... You know, I know I repeat myself, but I want to just be clear that if, if it's a part of this design, this file that I am missing in regards to instructions or um, how to make the ears at least, it has no mention of the ears. So, now what? Um, and I also went on YouTube to see if I could find videos on how to make the floppy ears or the 3D ears. And I didn't see not only them or any other videos uh, in regards to it. Now, if there are uh, videos on appliquecorner.com that uh, gives a step-by-step, -step, shows a step-by-step -step process on how to make the ears for these uh, 3D designs because she has loads of them, I missed it. I didn't see that on the website either, but once again, maybe I missed it because she does have multiple um, videos. I just didn't see any video that talks about making the ears for the giraffe, for the dog, for the other animals that she have. So, if you want to know um, what I thought about this design in regards to grade, you will have to watch the embroidery report card as I will be doing a review. And if you want to see how I make the ears, stay tuned for the next show. Thank you so much for watching. In the meantime, I have to go and do the personalization for this this towel. Thank you for watching. If you liked it so far, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, so this is the other set that I made, and if you want to see the floppy ears, I made them actually uh, with the same fabric, okay, because I wanted it to all match, and uh, pretty much it's uh, going to just uh, appear 3d so the design itself uh, the, the design itself is absolutely adorable I don't know why I get tongue twisted sometimes and then we made this earlier to match so you see how it all ties in together okay so stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to put this all together okay the ears how to attach them and so forth